Hi, I'm Adam. And in this series of videos, we're going to be taking you through the various aspects of WAVES, our earthquake data analysis program. So, let's get started. So when you start up WAVES, you're presented with this workspace. The toolbar contains all of the commonly used tools, and the easiest way to show you how to use them is to start with the size of grid. So here we have three different Gecko recorders. Here's the 0900 hour, all of the one minute mini seed files. So if we drag a single file onto our Waves window, it will open that file and we'll see the traces. So as you can see, we have one minute of data. We could select multiple files and drag them on while holding the control key and it will merge them in. Alternatively, we can drag a whole hour folder onto Waves and it will merge all of those files into a single timeline. So now we have our triaxial recording. So now we can start to analyze our data. To zoom in, we could click on a single point, then we can press the zoom button to start to zoom in. If we want to revert to our full timeline, we use this orange button up here. Um, let's maximize the screen just so we've got a bit more workspace. So now, if we want to zoom in, a quicker way of doing it is to right click and drag a section and then mouse over it and you'll see that the cursor changes to a magnifying glass. So we'll click there and we're zooming in on that. So you can just repeatedly do that until you've zoomed into the section you want and then you can place a marker. Now here we have the P wave arriving. So we can select the P wave from this list and then do set and it will mark that P wave. Alternatively, we could have hit the P key. So let's say, let's move that mark over here, hit P, or move it back, hit P, it will mark that as the P wave arrival time. So we can right double click to return to our full waveform, and then we can start zooming in again. You can use your mouse wheel to scroll in. So if you point, it'll scroll into your pointer when you start to zoom mark our S by hitting the S key or selecting it from our list here. You can type any word up here you like. So say we wanted to mark this as a point of interest. Set that point, it's marked as an interest point. So you can use this field for anything you like. To clear an arrival, we just go into our list up here and we can just delete it from the list. But if we go back to the beginning, we can see that we actually have three different stations that recorded this earthquake one in the basement, one on the ninth floor, and one on the 18th floor of this building. So we have data from that hour from all three stations, and then drag all three of those hour folders onto waves. We'll merge them all together, and then we see we have three different stations. We have the basement, ninth floor, and 18th floor. Now they all look similarly scaled at the moment because each channel is maximized to take up the full amplitude. But if we wanted to display them relative to each other, we can change the amplitude grouping. Instead of being grouped individually, group them all to the same amplitude. And you will see that the basement had smaller motion than the middle of the building, which was smaller again than the top of the building. Again, we can still use our zoom controls. So on the side here, we can see what the peak is for the displayed section. We can see these frequencies. Now that we have a P and an S marked, we know how many seconds are between those two points. And using the basic P and S velocity that we store in our preferences, it can estimate the distance to this earthquake and it can also estimate the local Richter magnitude. So in this case, this earthquake was about 120 kilometers away and around magnitude six. Mm -hmm. 